Hey, it's Mr. Veve, and we're going to talk about biomolecules today, four different ones to look at here. So let's jump into our first key concept, which is carbon-based molecules serve a number of functions in living organisms. Key there is that they're carbon-based. So why is carbon so versatile here? So uh, to get into a little bit of chemistry, carbon atoms have four valence electrons. That's the electrons on the outer energy level. So if you see that outer ring right there, you see one, two, three, four electrons. This means that it can make four bonds either with itself, uh, other carbon atoms, or other elements. This makes it extremely versatile to get that nice planar geometry that you're looking for. So what is a monomer? A monomer is a small piece of a polymer or a building block. So think Legos once again. Mono means one, mer means part. So what would a polymer be? A polymer is a large molecule made up of several repeating units. So a polymer is several monomers put together. So again, look at these Legos. That's what I want you to think of. So you got three monomers in the first one and five monomers in the second one. Each one of those would be a polymer. So these are very important concepts when we're looking at these different biomolecules because each biomolecule has a different monomer and a different polymer in what they're called. So first let's start with carbohydrates. This is our first biomolecule. They are made up of the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And what they do is they are a quick source of energy for the body. So you can see on the bottom left here is a picture of what a carbohydrate looks like in its structure. And you see a whole bunch of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. Not much else. And so you see some of the foods that we find carbohydrates in. And those are fruits, vegetables, breads, grains, uh, and you see even some pasta there as well. So what else can we find out about carbohydrates? Well. The monomer for a carbohydrate is called a monosaccharide. Saccharide refers to sugar because carbohydrates are sugars. A polymer would be a polysaccharide. This one's a pretty easy to remember. It's just the word saccharide that you have to remember here. And there you see a picture of fructose, glucose, and galactose, and those are the monosaccharides. And if you put a bunch of those together, you end up with a polysaccharide that have different names. So what shape are they in? These are a ring structure, and you can see that little hexagon uh, looking sort of ring. It doesn't have to be a round ring necessarily, but we call these ring structures in chemistry. And the examples are glucose, which is your standard sugar that you think of, uh, starch, breads, vegetables. So please just be able to identify these if I showed you a picture of them. So what's next? We have proteins. So these are uh, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but we add a little bit of nitrogen now into proteins. And the function or the uh, things that proteins are used in are enzymes, hormones, antibodies, and they're basic building blocks of life. So on the bottom right there you can kind of see a basic structure. Uh, the R on that does not represent an element, it just represents um, something attached to that carbon, which could be uh, anything. So you see mainly your carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and then that purple nitrogen right there. These are mostly meats uh, that you find these in. Okay, so the monomer of a protein is called an amino acid, and the polymer is called a polypeptide chain, and several polypeptide chains together make up a protein. So the examples again, enzymes, hormones, and meat. You can see in that picture there how you have the little circles which represent amino acids, and then they form a chain, and then they get a little more complex, and they form this big old protein molecule there at the bottom. So what is the shape of a protein? Well, their uh, amino acids are all in a chain, and then they kind of get folded up along themselves. So you can see the top there, you have an amino acid chain, then they form these different shapes, and then they form more complex shapes, and then they form even more complex shapes down at the bottom. So just think of them as folded amino acid chains to make interesting shapes. So next we're going to talk about nucleic acids. These have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, and then we add phosphorus in there. Their function is to store and transmit genetic information. So the nucleic acids are mostly found within the nucleus uh, of the eukaryotic type cells or just floating around in prokaryotes. The monomer is called a nucleotide and a polymer is a nucleic acid. Easy to remember there. So examples are DNA and RNA. So let's look at the shape here. You know that DNA is a double helix, RNA is a single helix. So you can see right there, you have the four different bases that make up DNA and RNA. And you can see the double helix shape right there. So last one here is lipids. 
Lipids are, again, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen only. No nitrogen and phosphorus this time. Uh, but the oxygen is present in very, very small amounts. So it's mostly carbon and hydrogen. And what's the function? It's uh, they make up cell membranes and they store energy. So lipids are fats, okay? The, uh, as opposed to carbohydrates, which are more sugar-based. The examples here, again, fats, oils, and then everything that you see in cell membranes. So pay careful attention to this shape here down at the bottom. Uh, you see a long, long carbon-hydrogen chain on the right, and then you see a carbon-hydrogen-oxygen portion over on the left-hand side. It's a very repeating kind of pattern. So there are no monomers or polymers for lipids. There's no special names for that. There's just a glycerol head and a fatty acid tail. So that carbon-hydrogen tail is, a, is called a fatty acid, and then the carbon-hydrogen-oxygen portion is called a glycerol head. And the glycerol is actually very hydrophilic, meaning it loves water. And the tail is actually very hydrophobic, which means it does not like water. And this will make a lot more sense when we start talking about cell membranes here in a little bit. So the shape, again, is the glycerol head with a tail. So you should be able to identify this and all of the other shapes of the biomolecules that we've talked about today.